Welcome to Hadley Presents. I'm your host, Ricky Enger, inviting you to sit back, relax, and enjoy a conversation with the experts. In this episode, Hadley's Doug Walker joins us as Hadley members share the funnier side of vision loss. Welcome to the show, Doug. Oh, thank you so much, Ricky. It's great to be here. It is awesome to have you back. Before we get into our bloopers for today, if you're listening to this show, you probably already understand just what a difference Hadley makes in people's lives. And everything we do is offered free of charge. We're able to do that because people like you have financially supported our work in the past. Please consider supporting us today so that we can continue to offer older adults adjusting to vision loss the practical and social and emotional help they deserve. If you'd like to donate, please visit hadleyhelps.org slash donate or call 847-784-2825. Thank you. And now let's talk bloopers, shall we? And you know... We are actually on, I think this is volume three or volume four, Ah, something like that. It turns out that there are lots of funny things that happen to people. And we're so thankful that people chose to share those things with us. And hey, if you're new and you're listening to this and you're like, uh, oh, these were funny. I want to go back and find the others. We will definitely have those in the show notes. But Doug, surely you've never had a blooper before ever. Uh, I, I think I could fill up a whole show just on my own bloopers, Ricky. So <laughs> most of it's good, I guess. So uh, yeah, yeah, just a couple. I'll probably be sharing a couple today. Just a couple. A couple that you're willing to share anyway. <laughs> There's a few that uh, off air, maybe. Right, we'll yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a few that are just too embarrassing, even for <sighs> a nice, safe space like yes. this. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, thanks to Ed Haynes, who was gracious enough to read the uh, written bloopers that came in from our members. We really appreciate that. I can't wait to see what everyone is sharing, and maybe I'll share one or two myself and encourage Doug to do the same. So why don't we get started then? We are first going to hear from Rick. From Rick. Well, I have to share this blooper with you. A few years ago, I was at my dentist's office getting a checkup. I needed a filling, so he gave me the injection to freeze the area, and he said he'd be back in a few minutes, so I decided to use the time to visit the bathroom. I knew very well how to get there without assistance, so off I went. Coming back, I entered what I thought was the room I'd been in. I carefully walked to the chair turned around, and started to sit down, at which time I sat upon the lady that was already in that chair. Seems I missed my room completely. The dentist who was in the room at the time but had his back to us didn't see me in time, but he directed me back to my room, and I could hear him explaining to the lady that I was visually impaired. I think she figured that one out. The lady was a good sport and commented that I could at least have bought her dinner first. I've been more careful since that time. (laughs) That is so great. (laughs) Have Uh, you ever done this or uh, almost done this? I I have come close. I've actually sat on more things, I guess, than people. Yeah. Yeah. uh, One time a plate of food was in a a chair. Uh, (laughs) Oops. Yeah. Like a picnic or something. So I did do that, but I'm never on a person. How about you? Almost, but not quite. And like you, I've almost sat on things as well. Like there's this, uh, at my doctor's waiting room, between some of the chairs, there's this really low table and I've almost sat on it several times. And what I think is so funny is for me anyway, nobody's (laughs) telling me I should buy them dinner. They kind of get speechless, but they just make these sounds. Like if I'm about to sit on something, it's like, oh, 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 uh, 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 no, no, uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, <laughs> that's funny that's sort of like our cats <laughs> we have three cats and they know that when i come to sit down they had better move right so they just scurry out of the chair real fast so yeah that's a great that's a great email yes thank you rick for sharing that one up next we are going to hear from dale from dale 
Our school district administrative team and spouses went out to dinner. It was a very fancy restaurant, which means there was really little lighting. And after I'd taken a few bites, I decided I'd better ask my wife if there was anything on my plate that I maybe don't want to eat. She responded, well, the flowers are gone. <laughs> the waitress assured us there was nothing to worry about. Those flowers are edible, she said. <laughs> well, at least he didn't eat the centerpiece. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> at least it was on the plate. I've probably done that one before. You're not the centerpiece, but the uh, garnish on the plate. And would Kim just watch you and let you do it, or would she speak up and say something? <laughs> she would tell me if she saw that I was going to do that. Well, you never know. I mean, yeah, it just depends on what kind of mood she's in. Yeah, how much trouble Hopefully you're I would in. be told. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I have not done that, but what I have done is some places there are the salads, and for whatever reason, they will not cut things up. Mm. So I've had so many rings of onion just hanging off my nose for a second. It's usually the onions. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. why they can't, you know, come on, chop the salad or why I don't <laughs> learn. You know, I should really figure out what's going on here before I spear something with a fork. <laughs> but Absolutely. I had to reach out to our access technology specialist, Lisa Salinger, because she had told a story before and I felt like it fit so perfectly here. And so I said, you know, will you record this? Because it's really so good. So oh, good. she did. And uh, here it is. Great. I'll never forget the first time I visited a Japanese restaurant. I decided I wanted an appetizer. So I ordered these little dumplings and they came on a nice little plate with a blob of something that seemed vegetable-like. I later found out it was ginger. There was a little bowl for soy sauce, and then there was a little ball of spread. I have no sense of smell, so I couldn't figure it out that way, but I touched it, and it kind of felt like cream cheese. Well, I never met any spread I didn't like, and so foolishly, the small size did not raise any warning flags in my head, and so I popped the whole thing in my mouth. At that point, my sinuses underwent an amazing transformation. I thought they were on fire. I thought I was dying. My ears even burned, wow. like the insides of my ears burned. And that is how I got introduced to a substance I hope to never encounter again. That was my meeting with wasabi. Oh, wow. I sympathize <laughs> and laugh at the same time. Oh, me too. And I really like mm -hmm. wasabi, but I mean, eating that whole ball of wasabi, I think that's oh. like how you transform into a dragon. I just can't imagine her tasting anything else after that. You Ever know, have to eat anything else after that? Oh. <laughs> I think she's still probably the sinuses are still clear. <laughs> <laughs> still drinking water at this minute. So, oh my goodness, no, I, I do like banana peppers, and occasionally, like in a salad, you know, I'll mistake a jalapeno for banana pepper and do that, but that's nothing like the wasabi to me. Yeah, and I like really, really spicy stuff, and I'm still cringing, huh? like oh. Oh, yeah. So I think there's a lot that happens around food. There are a lot that we didn't share <sighs> only because they are such a common theme that it just feels like, oh, everyone's done this at least once. And if you haven't, your time is coming. But, you know, <laughs> pouring the wrong thing in your in your coffee cup. Like, oh, yeah. I put pepper in there or orange juice or whatever in the coffee. So like a lot of things go wrong around food for whatever reason. Yeah. And uh, next up is really no exception, I guess. We're going to hear from Linda. From Linda. I have retinitis pigmentosa. My vision is very blurry. We were on a cruise to Alaska, and we were going to the buffet for lunch. We finished lunch, and I was standing outside the cafeteria waiting for my husband. My husband is bald, 
So a bald man walked out of that cafeteria, and I grabbed his arm, and I said, that was a really good lunch. He said, yes, it was, but who are you? (laughs) We all got a really good laugh out of it. (laughs) Oh, that is great. Have you done this one before? Oh, yes. Um, (laughs) So I used to, and I'll talk about this later on, but used to work at the Tennessee School for the Blind, and my wife was actually the principal in the school, and there was a teacher that looked exactly like my wife to me with low vision, right? Right, So this teacher got where when she was coming down the hall, before she would get to me, she'd say, I'm not your wife. So she was like (laughs) an announcement. Don't say anything you'll regret kind of thing. So how about you? I've not really done that so much, except for one incident that I'll talk about a little later. But thankfully, I'm usually... I guess because I don't have any vision, I'm waiting for the person to speak before I (laughs) say anything. Yeah. So it's not that I'm just that much more clever. I just, you know, I have, I have different problems. Get that auditory cue before you start. That's it. There you go. So have you had any other uh, lunch related difficulties? Well, you know, on the theme of, um, of eating and food and yes. all that. Well, I mentioned earlier that, you know, I used to teach elementary school at the Tennessee School for the Blind, and um, I would bring my lunch with me every day, uh, sort of like a little brown bag lunch. So uh, my wife used to pack my lunch for me. That was very sweet, right? Um, but uh, anyway, I took my lunch, and I would put it in the refrigerator in the teacher's lounge. Well, it would get to be lunchtime, so I went down and got my lunch and brought it back to my classroom to eat. And uh, so I sat down, I started eating it, and uh, I thought, this is kind of different. She would put this little package of tiny pickles in there, and there was some chocolate pudding in it, and uh, I think there was also like a ham and cheese sandwich. But uh, anyway, it's just a little bit different um, than usual, uh, or what she usually packed, but uh, it was really good. Uh, so anyway, I'd totally forgotten about it, you know, after lunch, but, uh, the next morning I was putting my bag lunch in the fridge in the teacher's lounge again. And I overheard one of the other teachers saying, can you believe that somebody stole my lunch yesterday? (laughs) And I was thinking to myself, what kind of person would do that? They would take someone else's lunch like that. Then I heard her saying, uh, yeah, I had these little pickles in there and some chocolate pudding, right? And I thought, oh, no. Uh-oh. So I snatched open the door to the fridge and checked. And uh, sure enough, there was my real lunch from yesterday, right? I had all the stuff that I would typically find in my lunch bag. Gosh, I was so embarrassed. Um <laughs> I did confess, Ricky, you'll be proud of me. Okay, that's good. I yeah, I lunch. thought you might have just shrugged and walked away. Like, yeah, no, no, everybody got a big laugh out of it. And for weeks I was hearing like, watch out, you know, don't let Doug steal your food. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I didn't hear the end of that for a while. I but. imagine not. But hey, you probably got some good ideas for future lunches. <laughs> Throw some of those in your shopping cart. Absolutely. That's right. And speaking of shopping carts... Uh, we have a story from Linda. It's another story from Linda. Thanks, Linda, for sharing two of them. From Linda. Another time, we were grocery shopping. I always pick out my produce and put it in the cart. And my husband had gone to get something else, so I grabbed my produce, turned around to put it in the cart, and said to him, Why is this in my cart? I didn't get this. And the man who owned the cart said to me, This isn't your cart. At this point, my husband came back and said, Honey, I'm over here. (laughs) Oops. Oh, my. I've done that. I put stuff in other people's carts, you know, not ours. Yeah. And you got to wonder, I mean, if it was like snacks or something and someone's watching their diet, did you get them in trouble? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Me and those little pickles, right? There you go. Put them in somebody else's cart. So, no. Have you done anything like that before? Well, my thing is to wander off from the shopping Mm. cart and then come back. I always, I think I Mm. mentioned this in a previous blooper episode where I like to go smell the candles if we're by the candle aisle, Mm. or maybe I have to go feel the 
casual, like the costume jewelry or, oh, the sweaters yep. are out. I need to yep. go check those out. So I wander away and then I make my way back. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully is right. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I did this once actually where I wandered away and I came back and I made my way to the front of the cart and I feel my purse in the cart in the front of the little basket mm -hmm. thing where yeah. you would put small things. So I found my purse there in the front of the cart, but it feels kind of like bulkier and f more full than I remember. So I'm standing there just kind of squeezing, massaging my purse going, yeah. what in the world is in there and I'm standing there kind of confused and about the time I bring my attention to the familiar weight of my purse hanging on my shoulder I hear ma'am oh. <laughs> I jumped oh, no. and I was blushing and stammering and it was not my finest hour. I was oh. not very graceful about <laughs> oh, it. No. And I was trying to explain. I'm so sorry. I was just absent minded. I forgot I had my purse on my shoulder. Mm. And she's trying to be polite, but you can tell that she's really yeah. just not having it. And finally, when she says, they're not even the same color. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I realized you, you didn't notice that. Oh gosh, oh, but no, I mean, they text the the texture of the purse felt mm -hmm. just like mine oh, in no. my defense. Oh. But I bet that was. I bet you did have a chill run down your spine when you realized. Yes, That's not my purse. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it makes me feel better about the food. Yes. <laughs> oh, I wanted to run away. I so wanted to run away, oh, and I. Bad. I, oh, that is hilarious. I definitely did not have the charm to gracefully extricate myself from that one. I wish I did. But Jim, on the other hand, I think would have done a lot better in a in a similar situation with a stranger. So let's hear from him. From Jim. The most frequent blooper that I step into is the accidental conversations that I have with total strangers. I leave home with my partner and I can go virtually anywhere, shopping, to a party, or to a restaurant, and the atmosphere is usually calm and casual and I sometimes believe I'm standing next to my partner or a friend, but unknown to me, they quietly slip away or divert their attention to something other than me, and then I, unknowingly, begin my conversation. I talk very openly and in a friendly way. I ask questions or state my opinion, and I have low vision that frequently changes through the day, so sometimes I see the surprised or bemused expression of my victim. But many times, there's a verbal interaction that's either embarrassing or more often funny. <laughs> I'm now accustomed to meeting people this way. It's happened often by now, and so often it's become a family joke. My family underplays it. Hey, Jim, met anyone yet today? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. I'm usually talking to poles. I don't often do this with people or empty yes, rooms. I yes, do that a lot. A mannequin. I think I've talked about that in another blooper. So, yes, <laughs> inanimate objects yeah. all around. Yeah. Have you ever had one where you were talking to someone that you didn't realize who you were talking to or anything I, like I've that? I've done that before. Oh, yeah. Especially in dimly lit areas you know, darker places. I think I'm talking with somebody and then realize all of a sudden, whoops, this is, this is not the person I thought I was speaking with, you know. Well, and, at least uh, you're not gossiping about the person you end up <laughs> actually talking to. Oh, that you, that you know of, Ricky. That, that I you know, know of, of, yeah. Maybe, maybe on the next blooper <laughs> show. So. Oh no. How about you? Oh gosh. Thankfully, I I don't usually, uh, that doesn't usually happen to me. I do remember when I was younger, though, I have the ability to do impressions. And uh, I always liked to do that for a laugh. And yeah. uh, there were a couple of times where the person 
I was doing impressions of just happened to be standing behind me. Now, thankfully, it was always in good fun, but that did not lessen the embarrassment factor. (laughs) I bet not. All right. So next up, let's hear from Lee. From Lee. This blooper was about 15 years ago. I was at the San Antonio Rodeo with my two young boys. They're twins, and they were about six or seven. We were playing around, and I was tapping them with my cane as we walked around, and they were laughing and running in front of me as we walked. Suddenly I noticed they were still laughing, but they weren't in front of me anymore. Turns out we had walked up behind a couple, and I was tapping some lady's ankle with the tip of my cane. Good thing her husband was understanding. Oh, yeah, you wow. don't want to use that wow. as a, like, get to know a stranger. Hey, I, I tapped you with my cane. Was this a good opening line? <laughs> Not a great way to shake hands. That's right. You know, hello. Kids are fun, though. I have done... Not exactly that, but I think there have been any number of instances where things have gone wrong and uh, my my kid was involved. I have one that I'm actually still kind of mortified to, to share. <laughs> so okay. when my son was younger, he had to catch the bus to school. And the school bus did not stop right outside the house. We Mm. had to walk a little ways and wait at this little area and the bus would come by and pick up the kids. So one morning we get to the bus stop and it's a little bit early and my son's just a bundle of energy and he's kind of pacing around and singing a little song and picking up rocks and doing all this stuff and just having a good old time. And the other kids start to arrive and he gets quieter and a little more shy. And suddenly he stops walking around and comes and stands fairly close. And I hear this rapper And uh, so he's unwrapping something and I smell, you know, that really artificial grape smell. (laughs) It doesn't really smell like grape, but it smells sweet and Uh, just, yeah. So I smell that and I look over at him and I'm just exasperated. Like, Mm -hmm. you just had breakfast and brushed your teeth. What is the, where did you even get this anyway? And (laughs) the response was, my mom gave it to me for a treat. (laughs) It was not my kid. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. Oh, that is, that is too much. Oh, and he was just so indignant, this kid. And with good reason, I think. Absolutely. (laughs) This was mine. Exactly. My mother gave it to me. So I felt yeah. really bad. It's like, I'm really sorry. You should enjoy your treat. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's great. Uh, I can't imagine what he went home and told his mom, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There's this lady at the bus stop. Watch out. <laughs> so on the theme of kids, we have one from Cheryl. From Cheryl. I have many bloopers I could share with you, but probably the most memorable one, at least for my son, began on a rainy day. It was kind of gray and drizzling, and I was in the car. Someone else was driving. We were coming back from taking him to trade in a video game when I saw a young boy standing in the rain in a short-sleeve white t-shirt very close to the street. Immediately I thought, this is just a toddler and he shouldn't be that close to the road. I rolled down the window and started telling him to get away from the road, and I was just about to get out of the vehicle and walk him up to the front door of his house when my son said, Mom, please stop yelling at the fire hydrant. (laughs) The city I lived in and recently painted the fire hydrants blue on the bottom and white on the top, and previously they'd been yellow. Oh, no. (laughs) That is great. Yeah. That is funny. That reminds me, um, in a previous place I used to live, at our front door across the street, there was a sign, and the sign looked like a guy standing there with a hat on. 
And I knew it was a sign because I'd gone out and checked. It was strange. It just stood there forever. Right. But every time I would look out that front door, I would see that guy across the street with a hat on. And I'd go, <laughs> oh, that's the sign. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> so it's so easy to do. Every time. Like, why is that man standing there? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, that's the sign. That's right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, so I totally get that one. That is great. These are so fun to share and and get a good chuckle out of. But what I think is kind of weird is we've gone through this whole episode and considering that it's you and me on the episode, we have not talked about technology once. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, guess what? Yeah, I think I can help fill that one in there. So, oh, good. Oh, uh, yeah. good. Uh, so this, um, so I do have a blooper. It does involve technology, but it involves airport travel experience. I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of travel bloopers. We probably could do a whole show on just travel bloopers. Most of us could, mm -hmm. I guess. But uh, I was actually traveling, flying into Hadley from Nashville. And so my wife dropped me off at the airport and I went through security and all that fun stuff and finally made it to the gate. Now, I have really, really low vision, so I used my white cane I use it pretty much all the time now uh, to, when I travel, especially, but uh, I don't want to run over anybody, right? So uh, I'm at the gate and I sat down and pulled out my iPhone so they could text my wife and say, I made it to the gate safely. Everything's good, right? So I noticed that I've sat down next to a group of about four or five teenage boys. And I can tell that they're all just staring at me. And I thought, you know, Maybe they've never seen anybody using a white cane. I, I don't know. But anyway, I just put in my AirPod so that I could hear my screen reader as I'm typing, right? But the iPhone also has this great feature called Screen Curtain. And when you turn on Screen Curtain, it turns your screen completely black so that people around you can't just glance over yeah, it's great. and see what you're doing on your screen. It's a really great built-in privacy feature. I think Android has it too, right? Yeah, uh, they Built do. in as well. Anyway, so I have my screen curtain feature turned on, and I start texting my wife. Now, I can tell that those teenage boys are still just staring at me, and I hear one of them next to me, and he whispers this, right? But uh, it wasn't really a whisper because I could hear every single thing he said, <laughs> typical teenage boy. Anyway, he said, uh, dude. He's pretending to type on the thing. <laughs> and I, just, I couldn't stand it. I just burst out laughing. And I thought it was just really hilarious because with the screen curtain on, I guess it did look like my phone was turned off and like I'm just pretending to type on the thing. You know? <laughs> right. And I've done that, like give a kid a broken piece of technology so they can play with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this guy sitting there playing with his phone. Right. But anyway, it turned out to be a pretty good thing um, because I took it off screen curtain and I took out my AirPods so they could hear it talking and everything. And I showed them how the phone speaks everything and I can totally move through it and you know, it turned into like a, a little mini Hadley workshop right there in the airport, you know, and uh, by the time it was time for me to leave and get on my plane, it was like they didn't even notice my cane anymore. And they were saying, that is so cool. You're so cool. You know, so anyway, I don't know if that's much of a blooper, but uh, it's a pretty fun moment. It's a pretty fun moment for me. I think it's great. I think it's it turned into a learning opportunity where something that could have been embarrassing, where they're just whispering about you, quote unquote, <laughs> behind <laughs> your back. Dude, he's pretending to type on the thing. They learned a lot, which is, I mean, I love it when kids can, can learn things like that. And then they end up doing something for a school project later, or they think about things a little bit differently just because of that encounter. So, yeah. Wow. These are always so much fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. I love it. I, my, my, my face hurts from smiling. So I've been much. sitting here smiling through this whole thing. It's been so much fun. Yeah. I want to thank you, Doug, for uh, agreeing to share some yeah. more of your bloopers. And uh, Ed, thank you for reading those and Lisa uh, for recording that and the rest of you, all the Hadley members for 
being vulnerable enough to share things that maybe did not feel great in the moment, but later you were able to get a chuckle out of those things and, and give other people a good laugh as well. Thank you again for dropping by. And again, if you want to listen to the previous bloopers, we'll have those in the show notes. And if you continue listening to the very end of the episode, you will have info on how to contact us and uh, you can share more bloopers if you like or anything else that you happen to be thinking about. Thanks so much. Got something to say? Share your thoughts about this episode of Hadley Presents or make suggestions for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you. Send us an email at podcast at hadleyhelps.org. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T at hadleyhelps.org. Or leave us a message at 847-784-2870. Thanks for listening. <laughs>